Hey there, it's Rebecca of Brian House Quilts, and today I want to show you one of the painting exercises from my workshop, Color Theory, Playful Color Theory for Quilters. I forgot the name of my workshop there for a minute. Anyway, so today I want to show you one of the exercises from the workshop, and the exercise is called Color Secrets. So before I do that, I wanna give you a little background on why I use paint to explore color. So I use painting exercise, exercises as a way to teach color theory, but also as a way to explore color. And I personally use it as a color strategy because in the past I've spent a long, 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 long amount of time choosing just the right colors for a project. And it came to a point where I was spending maybe half the time on a project just choosing the colors and it was really taking a lot of my mental energy and mental resources and by the time it came to the actual sewing part i was just drained so in the past few years i've come up with these different strategies to help me choose colors quickly and easier so I can get to the fun part, which is of course the sewing. So this is one of the strategies that I teach in my workshop, Playful Color Theory for Quilters, and I'm happy to share it with you today. So in this painting exercise, it's called Color Secrets, and it's a really quick way to come up with colors and a color palette that automatically coordinates. So instead of pulling the color palette out of thin air, you can use paint and find colors that coordinate quickly and easily. So let me show you that. Before I show you, I'm gonna be tilting the camera down to my workspace here, but before I do that, I wanna show you what I'm using. So I'm using acrylic paint, and since it's fall, I'm wanting to come up with a, a fall palette and I wanna use, I'll be using purple and some oranges with a yellow and a pink. So again, instead of pulling a palette, a fall palette out of thin air, I'm gonna be using these paints to help me discover a color palette that automatically coordinates. And then once I've got my paint painted on my, my, um, my journal, I'll use my color chips and then I'll choose the color chips that match the paint swatches. And I'll, I'll show you what I'm doing, but I've got my color swatches here, and I'm also using a palette. This is a butcher's palette, I believe. It's one of my favorite ways to mix paint. And of course, I've got paint brushes and water. Okay, so I'm gonna tilt the camera down, and I'll show you how I mix these paints. Good morning, Anne slash mom. Hi, mom. Thanks for tuning in, mom. <laughs> okay, so to start with, I'm going to, let's see, I'm gonna start with the purple and, let's see, the orange. And I'm gonna squeeze some large dollops of paint onto the butcher, the butcher palette here. I think it's called a butcher palette, but I'm not sure. So maybe I should stop calling it the butcher palette. And now, now what I do is I try to start mixing these in equal, equal parts. So what I'm gonna do, I've got the solid, the plain purple out of the tube here and the plain orange out of the tube on this side. And I'm going to mix equal parts in the center here. Can you see that okay? Is it, it looks okay to me, but let me know if it's not looking okay for you guys tuning in. Okay, so I'm trying to scoop equal parts of the paint here. And now I think I've got equal parts. So I'm just gonna mix these together. And I'm getting this really, a, mm, I don't know what color it is. It's a darker burnt orange. It's actually 
Not as bad as I would have thought mixing purple and orange together. So that, that's quite a nice color and it coordinates with purple right here. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix this 50-50 mix. I'm gonna mix it with purple and then I'm gonna mix it with orange over here. And this is turning out to be a little bit gray. It's almost a really rich gray, almost like a, um, it's actually almost like a dark dried out mum, a purple mum or an orange mum that's dried out, which is really nice. It kind of captures that fall spirit right there. Hi, Julie, how are you? And now I'm gonna mix the 50-50 over here with this orange over here. And what I'm doing is I'm mixing these paints together. So I started with the orange here and the purple, and then mixing them together to try to find colors that automatically coordinate instead of having to come up with these colors right out of the thin air. I thought, why not use paint, go directly to the source, so to speak. Okay, so I've got a little bit less bright of an orange here, but I haven't added any black to this orange to make it darker. So I've got a darker orange here, but I haven't taken any of the color saturation away. So if you're looking to use a lot of color, but and you don't wanna add black or gray, but you want a darker color, one trick you might use is to add another darker color to it, like purple or blue, and you'll get a little bit darker orange but you won't be taking any of the color saturation away. And that's one of the things we cover in Playful Color Theory for Quilters, but I thought I'd mention it here too. Okay, so I've got a little bit darker orange, this 50-50 mix with it, which is also a darker orange. I've got this really kind of nice orangey purple here, which is something I never would come up with. Um, having just gone straight to fabric, I wouldn't choose that color, but it's actually quite nice against the purple. I feel like I can get another color step in between this purple and this gray purple orange mix here. So I'm gonna try to do that. I'm gonna try to find another step. I need to change my paintbrush. And mixing Let's see, so I've got this straight purple out of the bottle, which is really bright, but if you wanna tone that purple down, but not take away the color saturation, then you could, this would be a trick to do that too. Just add another color to take the edge off. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm just trying to get some nice color steps in between these colors so I can see some color change. Okay, so I think I see the purple from the bottle, the orange from the bottle, and then I've got these two different purples here, a gray here, and a darker orange here, a lighter orange here. And so I think I've got enough steps. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna paint each of these swatches into my color journal and see how they look on paper. Hey Debbie, how are you? I'll try to find the blank page here. So in the workshop, I instruct you to, in the exercise, the actual official instructions, I instruct you to paint the purple swatch on one side and the orange swatch on the other side. And then we're gonna paint the steps in between those two swatches. Okay, 
so I'm painting orange on one side and this orange is straight from the bottle and it's quite bright and I'm just adding water to it to make it more translucent try to clean off my brush so I'm not diluting my purple I thought I'd grabbed enough brushes. I should have grabbed just another another brush. Oh well. Okay, I'm just painting the purple straight from the bottle and on this other side. And then I'm adding water to my brush. And make I make I'm making the paint more translucent with it, which is letting the paper show through, and so it's decreasing that color saturation and volume. And now I'm gonna paint the swatches in between. Let's see. I'm actually gonna paint this 50-50 mix in the middle so I can see what is the true middle here. So this little burnt orange here. And now I'm in Texas, right? So I feel burnt orange is our state color almost. Debbie, are you an Aggie or a, a Longhorn perchance? I know Debbie lives in Texas. Okay, I've got the oranges painted, so I'm gonna paint my purples on. And this is my color journal. I do a lot of my different painting color exercises in this journal. And once I've done it, I can go back and refer to it, say if I'm looking for a fall color palette. So this is the result of what I've got here. And you can see that I've got my purple from the bottle and the orange here. And I think that we can see some nice color gradation here. And instead of having to think and draw this palette from thin air, I've used paint to do the color study for me. And now my next step would be to go to my color chips and choose the colors that match, the fabric colors that match this palette here. Oh, I'm sorry I won't get to see you either, Julie. Oh, bummer. Okay. So that's how you do the playful, I'm sorry, the color secret exercise. These are some different swatches that I've done using the same exercise. So this is orange and purple here. And I also mixed pink and blue here and I've got some really fun purples here. Hi, mom. Yeah, I bet you're glad to have me back. <laughs> and then I mixed, um, I mixed a brownish orange with a, a forest green and I got this nice color variation here. And then purple and green. And I really, I just love this color technique because it takes the thinking out. I don't have to do the thinking. The color interaction is here and it's doing all the thinking for me. And so what I would do next is I would get my my color chips and I'm using a cut up Kona, col Kona color card and I would just start matching the colors so this school bus looks like it matches this orange for example and then I've got this berry that matches one of the darker purples here and then you know, I keep adding these purples and oranges from my stash until I've got my color palette here. And once I have the color, the final color palette, I can order the solid fabrics or I can go to my stash and I can pull out colors that will work from my stash. I'm trying, I'm looking at my table now and seeing if I have any, any fabrics that are readily on my table right now.
Okay, my phone is not sticking, sticking, there we go, okay. All right, so, so that was one of the exercises from my Playful Color workshop. And I, again, I just really enjoy using paint. So the paint does the thinking for me and I can save my mental energy for the actual designing and the actual quilting and sewing part, which I think is the fun part. So this is one of the tricks that I've learned. Okay, I'll see you later, Julie. Bye, thanks for coming. So this is one of the tricks that I use to help me streamline my color my color choosing practice so I can get to the fun part. Okay, so if you want to learn more about color theory or if you wanna learn more of my color uh, shortcuts, then I invite you to join in my online workshop, Playful Color Theory for Quilters. Um, we're starting this week, registration is open now, but it closes on Sunday. I, this is the last time I'll be offering the workshop this year, and I'm thinking I won't offer it again until next fall, but it really depends on what people's interest level is for the workshop. So if you're interested, please do sign up, and if you're a newsletter friend or if you're in my Facebook group, I've got a, a coupon code for you to use. So if there's any questions about the online workshop, um, I'm thinking there's not any questions for you guys online right now, but for those of you that are viewing later, if you have a question about the workshop or about the color technique that I show here, go ahead and ask the question in the comments and I'll be back through the comments later to answer your questions. Okay, so, and again, if you go ahead and like this video to let me know that you see it and you wanna see more, I would really appreciate it. That helps me with the Facebook algorithm, God. So any likes and comments you leave me here or on other posts always help me out. So, okay, so I don't think there's any questions now, but I wanna thank you guys for tuning in live and I will see you again next Wednesday. I'm planning to do another Facebook Live next Wednesday and I'll be showing you what I'm working on um, just for fun. So I'll be showing off my just for fun project. So until then, I will see you on the internets. Bye.